Now that we have the desktop client set up, we're ready to clone that repository onto our local computer. The cloning process essentially means to take a copy of a repository on GitHub and download it into a location on your local drive. This process is what's known as cloning. Um, it's not a very complicated process with the GitHub desktop. I'm going to show you two different ways to um, initiate the cloning process. You will have to decide when you're doing it where you want the files to reside. Um, but once you have done that, then when you want to access the files that you've downloaded, you can just use your file system to do that. So this is the screen that we saw right after we had created the uh, new repository. And if I go to this uh, code button and click on the little arrow, I can see that I have several options. One of the options is to open with GitHub Desktop. Um, I'm not going to click on this button um, because I'm going to show you how to open it directly from GitHub Desktop. And if you haven't completed the login process, it may uh, be complicated. So let's uh, do it from the desktop client. Um, but in the future, it's quite easy to download, initiate the cloning download by just clicking on that button. So when I'm in the desktop client and logged in, then I can go up to this drop down in the upper left. And this shows me the list of all the repositories right now that um, I have downloaded locally. There's a drop down here. And what I want to do is to go to that and select clone repository. When I do this, then basically the desktop client, if I'm logged in, will know what all of the repositories are that I could potentially access online. And so um, let's see if we can find the one that we uh, created. It was called Project One. So there it is. Now, once I found the um, repository that is in my online GitHub repository, I have to decide where I want it to put the uh, project on my local computer. Once you set up a default directory, then it will continue to put, put all of your downloaded repositories in that same directory. On my Mac, it defaulted to putting the GitHub directory inside my documents folder, which I actually don't like. Um, it is possible to move the directory once it's been created, but it's um, kind of a pain. So it's best at this point to decide, do you want it to be in your documents folder? Do you want it to be directly in your home folder? Or where do you want it to be? And you can choose by clicking on the choose button and it will open up a dialog where you can navigate to the place where you want it to put this. Um, so what it'll do is create a folder called GitHub. And then within that folder, it will create uh, subdirectories for each of the cloned repositories. So I'm going to go ahead and let it put it in the same place where all of my other repositories are. And it's going to default to the same name, Project One, which is what I called it when I created it. So I'll just simply click on Clone. It doesn't take very long because uh, there wasn't very much in there. So now we see Project One shows up in my list of available repositories. And uh, so once I've collapsed this menu, if I click on the history, I can see that there is actually one initial uh, commit, and that was when I created the repository. So here we see the same three fi files, the readme.markdown, the license file, and the get ignore file. Those are the three ones that were, I created online. If I want to see where they are on my local computer, Remember that uh, my GitHub folder was in my documents folder. So I'm going to click on my documents folder. And here I see GitHub. 
So this is where it's storing all of the repositories that I have downloaded. And here's the Project One folder. So um, in the Project One folder, I can see that there is um, the README file and also the uh, license file. I don't, however, see the get ignore file because that is being hidden from me. On a Mac computer, if I want to see hidden files, I need to hold down on the command and shift key and then hit uh, dot. And that now shows me the hidden get ignore file. Um, so normally I'm not going to mess around with this, but uh, if I do need to change something, I can uh, open it. You'll also notice there's a hidden directory here called .git. This is where um, GitHub desktop client and actually any Git um, command line or anything manages all the information about the version control. This is not a folder that you should mess with, which is why it's hidden from you. Um, but that's basically how uh, Git and the desktop client keep track of all of the past history of your files. So I'm going to go ahead and let those be, become hidden again. Um, so in a, a future lesson, we will see how we can edit this readme.md file and change it so that it says the things that we want it to.